town you never heard of. Hey everybody, welcome to the Common Folk Podcast with Ben, Morgan, and Andy. Welcome back to Common Folk. The yeah. podcast for the people by the people. God, there's, there's we got, the radio voice. We got an extra people right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's a radio guy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was good. Hey, B103. B103. There we go. The B. Yes. The yes. B. Andy used to drive the B around. Mm-hmm. He, it was yeah, that was my company he car for three months. He was like this cute little guy and, the, yeah. and like a cute little B. Like, hi, Andy. It fit me so well because <laughs> I'm a good looking guy and it's a good looking car. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. Okay. And it was just like, <laughs> you're little. Like. You With were a stinger little. on the end. Yeah. 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 I took nice. the stinger off. Oh, okay. So. okay. I don't think you could be a big guy <laughs> in a little B. It didn't, wouldn't work. I don't know. It's a Volkswagen, so it fits, no, it fits big guys in there. I don't. I just think it would look weird because a lot of times you know when they first came out Mm -hmm. they had that cute little vase and the the women would have the little plants or the little flower in the cup holder and it was Mm -hmm. like oh how cute Mm -hmm. so i think they became this thing that was just like a cute thing that so you were kind of in a girl car for no i wasn't that b was a turbo (laughs) and that was a new one we got down in kansas okay he's defending that b boy he is no it it could get up and go i'm not saying guys can't drive bees but i'm just saying in my engineering super bees yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> In my mind, I feel like it's kind of a girl car. I would just make sure the windows were tinted really dark. <laughs> So no one could see that it was a guy in there? So no one could see me. <laughs> <laughs> You're too tall to be in one of those things. I don't know. I don't know. No, you'd fit? They got okay. big roofs. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, was... So we're back this week with our buddy Vaughn Hammond. How's it going, Vaughn? Very fine. Good, good. Uh, we wanted to speak with you about um, this new venture that you're involved in called Nebraska Vegetable and Protein. Yes. Or so, what did you call it earlier? Uh, what was your nickname for it? My nickname? I call it the uh, Fish Farm Lettuce Ranch. Yeah, there you or go. Or sometimes it's the Lettuce Ranch. or The Lettuce uh, Fish Farm Ranch. Lettuce Farm Fish blah, blah, Ranch. Blah, blah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, so I, I had heard about this place, I want to say it's been about a year ago now, um, just, like, I think I saw some social media posts. I might've seen a, a news article, um, but basically the gist of what I was picking up was Atlantic salmon being grown in Nebraska city. Yes. And I was like, this is crazy, man. Yeah, they, no way. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, They've got to get this, have this wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So I just kind of kept it on my radar. I was just kind of listening out for when more things would come out trying to pay attention um, and I had mentioned it to these guys and I was like, we, you know, we do a lot of cool interviews. This would be a neat interview. Um, so I had heard that they were going to be involved in a small farmer's market out at Nebraska Brewing. So I made the trip out there, uh, specifically to see those guys and try to figure out what was going on and see if we couldn't set up an interview. So I stopped in, um, they're shy. Y- yeah, they were quiet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, but went up and introduced myself. Um, they're very inviting. It was, uh, who was there that day? I'm trying to remember who I met. I think you probably met L and. I guess it would have been those two. Yeah. yeah now that I L think about Callie. it. Yeah. 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 Um, two wonderful young people that have really Yeah. The ones up. we met today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess it was them. Yeah. Cause uh, I know she said she was there. I didn't know if he was there. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't with you, but. And, and like you said, they were pretty quiet and I was kind of telling them, you know, what we do and we were wanting to do an interview and they were like. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you need to talk to, it's Keel, right? Mm-hmm. That's the owner. Keel Vanderveen. Yep. Keel and Mimi. Okay. Van so they're like, yep, that's who you need to talk to. And um, I think we've got a card or something. And then, or no, they didn't have it. They were trying to find a pen. They were going to write me down a phone number, but couldn't find a pen. And then they found a card and gave me the card. <laughs> and actually, I I got there probably after an, an hour after that thing had kicked off. And they were completely sold out of fish. Yeah. So it went quick. And mm-hmm. I was planning on picking some up that day too. Like, why not? You know, I'm there. Mm-hmm. Let's try it. Um, so I was obviously seeing like they're having success. There's some buzz around this thing. So I tried to make contact with Keel. He ends up a week or two later calling me back. Um, yeah, hey, you know, just wanted to follow back up. Sorry, I missed your call, whatever. I told him who we were and what we were wanting to do and interview. And um, I had mentioned this on the other podcast, but he said, uh, yeah, uh, you're going to need to talk to one of our guys. I want you to talk to Vaughn. And I said, Vaughn? And there's only one Vaughn I know. <laughs> I the said, daddy. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Vince Vaughn? <laughs> no. Okay. No, okay. No, no. okay. I was like, uh, 
that's not Vaughn Hammond, is it? And he goes, yeah, you know him? And I was like, yeah, I know Vaughn. He's, he works for <laughs> yeah. you down there. And he's like, yeah. And I said, perfect. I'll just give him a call. And he said, yeah, all right. So then I gave you a call and um, we caught up quick and uh, decided to get together. So we got the opportunity uh, earlier today. You guys invited us down. So Morgan, Andy, and I came down, got to tour the operation, see the grassroots set up, all the things that you guys are doing, um, learned a lot about it, and then we wanted to come back to the studio and talk about it, um, talk about what we're seeing and kind of just share with the folks what's going on in Nebraska City. So I would say to start with, um, let's talk about how did you get hooked up with these guys? Okay, so um, I've been based in Nebraska City as a uh, extension educator for a number of years. I've lived in Nebraska City for about 21 or 22, okay. um, working in specialty crops always, and uh, orchards or whatever the case may be. And uh, so part of I, – I, I've – I'm pretty involved in the community, and I was on a yeah. couple of committees with Keel, and that's how I'd met Keel and okay. dealing different things. And early on, we had a program that we, Connie Reimers Hild, who um, is a person that lives out of Beaver Lake. Someday you need to talk to Connie. Okay, um, she uh, started a program called I Two E, which was basically an entre- entrepreneurship um, group. And Keel started to coming to that as as many many years ago, and that's how I first met him, and then through the organizations and whatnot. And Keel's a very progressive young man, and uh, so he knew that I knew a lot about different things, and it just so happened that uh, my first career was in hydroponic lettuce, and and I've done a lot of work in greenhouses and high tunnels. And he called me up and said, "Hey, would you? We're looking at this project. Would you consider consulting with us on this?" And it was a Buddy Opel type of consulting deal. Mm-hmm. And so then I retired and uh, uh, was fully retired for three months doing my own thing. Uh-huh. And then Keel calls me up one <laughs> February and says, uh, "Hey, I want to run a few things by you." And at the end of it, he says, uh, "Would you?" Uh, consider coming out and working with us and i said you know um here's my re- you know here's what it is and you know very fluid no set hour you know whatever and we came to agreement and, and that's how i got involved out at nebraska vegetable and protein i'm on the growing side of the lettuce um Early on, you know, it was a group effort, and there was I had involvement in the fish and whatnot. But you guys have been out there; you can see how mesmerizing the it fish are. It is so are. awesome. Yeah, and so I learned early on that I couldn't immerse myself into the fish because I would never get out to the lettuce because I would just stand there watching the rainbow trout all day long. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. throwing them. Handfuls of feed, you know, yeah. it's way better than feeding the ducks. Yeah, the lettuce don't do anything <laughs> no, for you. No, no, it does. <laughs> I'm telling you, more of a slow growth. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so that's how it kind of all came came about on the lettuce side, and and yep. it was at that point in time, it was Keel and Mimi, and you know, and a couple other folks, and. And, and then myself. And so we kind of just plugged along. And and um, now we've hired a couple, a young couple from Vermont who have a fish background and, and they're doing the fish part. And uh, I continue to uh, uh, do the lettuce part. And uh, it's a, a lot of fun. So before we get into the operation itself, what, sure. what do you think made him want to do this? Like, where did this come from? Um, you know, <laughs> Keel's dad said that he told me one time or told a friend of mine that his mother had taken him to way too many science fairs. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so okay. Keel is, Keel is, wow, the best way to describe him is a go-getter. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, he and another gentleman, um, got into, you know, got into this whole idea of producing fish in the midwest and he's really taken to it and it's just it's just flourished i mean it's incredible it's incredible so a little bit of stuff that i've read online and even with talking to the folks today Mm -hmm. it sounds like this is one of only a handful maybe only a couple of these kinds of operations in the country yes yes um 
so this is like the second largest in the country doing this kind of thing. Yeah, and we're and we're we are relatively small when you talk about that. Sure, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I, yes, we do probably have you know fifty, sixty, seventy thousand fish in there, something like that. But yeah. as you can attest to, some of them are fry. You know, thousands yeah. of fry, mm-hmm. and some yep. of them are you know a few ounces or a few grams is the way you know they gauge them, and mm. then it goes up to you know when we harvested our. First harvestable harvestable batch, um, like Al said today, some of them were what, 13, 15 pounds. Yeah, you you know, big ones. monsters, yeah. monsters, yeah. too big. Yeah, right. You know, but again, you know, this was the first harvest and getting to it, and you know, all the things that it took to get that quality harvest. Uh, again, it's a research and development at this point. So um, on the cusp of becoming much, much more. Right. Yeah. Obviously, there's big plans uh, yes. as you guys figure out kind of the ways to make all this work. Correct. Um, but yeah, my point was is that it's it's so unique. It's it's I didn't know what to expect, um, but it wasn't quite that. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. The it's pretty hard to know what to expect pulling yeah. up to you know a uh, a. Uh, steel shed and with a little greenhouse attached to it and right. what yeah. is with this with a ton of about? snow on it let's like, add. yeah 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 <laughs> well i had a picture in my head uh-huh. and and the fish side uh, was just about right you know and, and you guys talked about the trials and tribulations you know we had to do this and then we switched to that and then okay you got this tank then move to that tank and then here's the cleaning house the chop but when you introduced the greenhouse and how you'd use the water from the fish to go over there and then that the plants would use that. The hydroponics would use that. Then it would come back to the fish, and, like, they would serve each other. Right. That, like, blew my mind. Like, I wasn't ready for all that. It, but it makes sense. Yeah, right. It, it totally makes, re- relationship. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it makes so much sense, but yeah. I never would have thought that. Absolutely. That's what I wanted to talk about next. So um, maybe kind of high-level explain aquaponics. Okay. You guys talked to us about it when we were down there, and I kind of got a grip on it, but I still didn't fully get it. Right. So, so my understanding, and I'm not an expert in aquaponics in any way, shape, or form, but hydroponics is growing in water, whatever the crop may be, lettuce, okay. tomatoes, mm-hmm. cucumbers, whatever, the standard peppers, standard normal hydroponic crops. So water product no soil essentially. no soil yep. correct when you pull in the aquaponics part that's pulling in fish and so the fish are raised in the water and the water that the fish are raised in then is used as the water substrate for the production of crops so instead of it just being water with fertilizer in it peter's 20 20 20 or whatever blue water that you mm-hmm. want to put in it it's now water with fish in it yeah okay, fish right. excrement in sure it. Yeah. yeah yeah you know so that's the difference it's kind of like uh you know cattle grazing on uh, harvested corn ground you right. know and right. out there doing their thing and then that yeah. all you know decomposes mm-hmm. and turns the circle into of life. food for the, yeah. for the plant yeah what, what was that Ka- Ka- lion king lion king okay. yeah, yeah. Circle of life. Oh, okay. I was like, Kuma <laughs> Matata. Yes. Kuma yeah. Matata. I didn't think I would Akuna ever. Matata. I think, didn't think I would ever forget that after seeing it 732 right, times. Right, from your kids that made you watch month. it on repeat. <laughs> or month. your grandkids. Akuna Matata <laughs> means no worries. And oh, okay. I don't think that's no worries at all. Oh, oh, he's right. Now we have an aficionado of <laughs> Lion King. Right? Well, I got Next a bunch of us. kids that are this tall, so I, I get my fill. He's got some young ones, yeah. too. Yeah. But you guys we're talking about this you guys might have the second facility so that's doing this Mm -hmm. the other one do they have fish and lettuce too does it have to be fish and and lettuce no it doesn't like like uh kelly and and uh alan were talking about their project that they worked in were uh tilapia and tomatoes Okay, but it's going to be a vegetable and it's going to be a fish. Pro- yes. Okay, yes, those two say. need to go hand in hand Although because of be the water. F- it could be flowers, it, uh, plant oh, material. Okay. Yeah. Plant material. Okay. What's uh, what's the upside or downside or whatever? Like if you take the f- if you take the fish out of it, hi- hydroponic growing versus growing in a standard situation in soil like we would are used to. Say that again. So, man. like, what what would be why, why would someone advantage? yeah why would someone just water or is it 
is there some good and some bad both ways or like what's the whole concept there's, there's there some even? good there's some bad um you know it's all about cleanliness so when it's soil grown you know you've got a lot of dirt involved mm-hmm. and you know it's growing right on the soil level where the 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 the, the beauty of the aquaponics deal and and also greenhouse so you can grow you know in water huge amounts mm-hmm. in in a, a, a contained system the beauty of the aquaponics is they could grow the fish and not deal with the lettuce part of it, mm-hmm. right? You know, but the fact of the vet matter is there's so much valuable fertilizer mm-hmm. that it is almost criminal to take that and just mm-hmm. discharge it. So from the, the fish, so that fish. fertilizer is helping your lettuce. Obviously, right? That is right. the only nutrient source for the lettuce but because you correct. feed it nothing. Correct. And it just gets that water. I give, it, I give it a little chelated iron right, three times a right. week. Right, that's right. You did say that. And okay. you also breezed over it. it. It's contained, and it really is because the water, right. you conserve so much water because it's just continuously going in this circle. Right. It goes from the fish to the lettuce, lettuce to the fish, and around and around. So around you're not, and around. You're not wasting water. It's not going down a ditch or whatever. Right. So, exactly. I mean, I think that would be, to me... All these wars and fights we have over water and water rights and streaming rights and yeah. this and that. I think that's a – might in, in the end of it all, it might be one of the biggest components that pushes that thing forward. Oh, yeah. it could be. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it goes yeah. back to like that sustainability type there thing you that you're heavily involved in just in mm-hmm. general, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what, what happens – so obviously the, the fish live in this water mm-hmm. and do their thing and create uh, – uh, essentially a, a, a nutrient rich water that the plants can feed off of. Correct. So then what are the plants? So then the plants essentially, do they become kind of like a filter and then kind of filter all that out? Right. And then they, the clean water goes back to the fish. Right. They take the, the, the nitrogen out yep. of the system. And so water with that reduced element is put back into the system, which okay. nitrates are very, very hard on the fish. Okay. It could be yep. fatal. Yep. Um, so it's taking I don't want to say cleansed water, yeah. but it's taking mm-hmm. basically filtered water, yeah. so yeah. to speak, back into the system. Yep. And okay. then we saw some other maybe process back to take some of the water back then to the fish. If Does it need to be cleaned again or um, run through a different system yeah, or not really? It, it, it's a pretty complicated. Yeah, uh, he was kind of saying it, but it was just a little bit like it needed to lose something and gain something and right. then there's, send it there's, back. But There's beneficial bacteria yes, that are involved right. and all those things. And but, the beneficial bacteria strip certain things but out. But just for it to, like we keep saying, circle mm-hmm. is huge. Yeah. It's well, kind of uh, crazy that it's well, yeah, impossible. The, the, the fish waste. Mm-hmm. Is is what is the lifeblood of the lettuce, and exactly. the, the waste of the lettuce is the lifeblood of, for, the for the fish. It's just right. amazing how these two are, you know, mm-hmm. working, working together, together and conserving the water. It's just like, duh. It makes so much sense to me. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just I love mm-hmm. it all, and it just kind of like you said, I didn't know what quite to expect, and mm-hmm. I thought, all right, this makes sense. The fish tanks, and here's the little ones, and now the bigger ones. Uh, yeah, but then when you added in the greenhouse, that, that kind of blew my mind. And it's and the fact that it's happening in. The Nebraska. Pl- in the plains in Nebraska. <laughs> and Nebraska it's, City, Nebraska. Yeah, and it's, it's Nebraska, yeah. Alaska. That insane. innovation, and, and again, I put that all back onto Keel and Mimi, you know. I mean, him having this dream and moving it forward and the support of Mimi and his family to do this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what attracted to me was just the, the will and desire for him to do this and, yeah. and me wanting to help him succeed. And on top of that, the weather that we're experiencing right now. Oh, I mean, gosh. we've had days and days of below zero temperatures. 75 day, 75 hours of below zero temperatures, I believe I mm. saw on KETV or some news feed yesterday. Yeah. And and it's uh, it, the, the greenhouse itself, you kind of showed us, you know, some of the tech that's in there and the the effect. Or that, lack of tech. Yeah, no, I mean, it was great. But but there yeah. was some stuff that I saw that I was like, wow, this totally makes sense. Right. Like the right. um the the effect that the fish water has mm-hmm. on the air temp, right. number one, is huge and is helping. Uh and number two, you guys have this um kind of like I'm not gonna call it makeshift, but it's not like a full on geothermal 
tarp system. Right, right. Where you have these tubes running underground and just circulating air mm -hmm. and grabbing that ground heat. Right. That to me is, seems huge. So, so just a little background. We have no external heat in this greenhouse. Yeah. So everybody consider this. We've had how many days of 18 below for a low? Mm. Yeah. Several. Right. Yes. Yeah. Several. Yeah. And you have plants growing. And we have plants growing. <laughs> now, that has not been without much trepidation. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, we've been very, very nervous, you know. And, and so we've done a couple other things to implement it. But I consider it a very passive type of production in that the water is always about – well, right now it's about 46 degrees right now. During the summertime, it goes up to 50-ish, somewhere in there. So in the summertime, that helps cool the greenhouse Absolutely. too. Yeah. Um, so the plants are growing in troughs that are four foot wide, 75 foot long and about uh, a foot deep. And then we have styrofoam rafts that float on this. So you've got a solid raft, basically. The rafts are two foot wide, four foot long. And so you have these rafts that are in the trough that create this layer of, of plant material, which then the roots are always in that 40 some degree water right now, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're not freezing, okay? And then we have the geothermal, so to speak, going on with the Earth's temperature coming back into the yep. greenhouse all the time. And that's about 50 degrees, 50-something 50 degrees. So that's always discharging into the greenhouse. So with this cold temperature, we did implement thermal blankets. Um, right before the storm, we, we got thermal blankets because we were in the middle of Putting some supplemental heat, minimal, because all we need to do is keep the greenhouse above freezing. Because mm -hmm. when you think of lettuce, it's a cool climate crop. Yeah. Okay. It'll go down to 30 degree, 32 degrees, you know, and anything below that, it's, it's pretty iffy. But anything above that, it's going to survive, you know, again, a cool season crop. Let me ask you real quick on sure. the temperature, because... We've always had gardens around here right. and played around with stuff. And lettuce was always something that might have been like a f we would plant in the fall, like basically after sure. the summer plants are done. And something someone had told me was that, yeah, you can grow lettuce during the summer if you want to. Right. But the something to do with the cold and the sugars in the lettuce, it, it, it has that positive effect on the taste as, as opposed to the heat. And maybe kind of a sour bitterness. Yeah. yeah. So is that what the deal is? A lot. I, yeah. It, it is. It, it correlates very well. So you got your springtime temperatures, and you know, which yeah. duplicate each other. You yeah. know, so really the primary growing periods for lettuce, a cool climate crop, is spring and and fall. Yeah. Okay. Right up to to frost, and then you throw in a little frost protection, and it takes care of you know even going a little further. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. This is all sense. so fascinating. I mean, yeah. we're talking about lettuce, and I'm like on the edge of my seat. Meanwhile, you're also growing Alaskan salmon in the building <laughs> yeah. next to it. And rainbow trout. <laughs> and rainbow and trout. trout. Yeah. And rainbow trout. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. When she was feeding it, that was pretty cool. They were jumping. Piranhas. They were excited. <laughs> I would not want to fall in there. I'm telling you that. They are always hungry. So. Folks around here, we, you know, we see – the only thing we see for rainbow trout is Nebraska Game and Parks mm -hmm. um, grows them and will stock, like, local ponds. Yeah. Yep. And then it's – you know, they, they give you a window. Eight inches long. Yeah. If you're yeah. lucky, 11. Yeah. 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 yeah, eight to tens usually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can go out there and catch them on a piece of corn or something like that. They're skinny little guys. Like, you, you'll get a little something out of it. Like, yeah. that's what we're used to for rainbows. Those things in that tank out there. Those were Colorado style. Well, no, but these were like th those are like <laughs> those are like Colorado gold medal streams. World okay. Records, okay. Yeah. Like master angler. Yeah, monsters. Yeah. <laughs> They're huge. They're beautiful. <laughs> they are. They're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, I'm going to be sad when we're not growing trout anymore. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and you're going to move it all to Alaskan salmon. Yes. Right. Yes. Ultimately, that's what the plan is. And and Alan was explaining this, and it was one of the bigger questions that Ashley had. Um, was that yeah? How can that 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 you can't do that because these are uh, predatory fish. You know, they eat smaller fish. 
how can how can you grow these fish without eating other small fish? Do you have like a little small fish feeder tank? What's going on there? We keep them separated. So mm-hmm. so as you might have seen, there were some goldfish in there, mm-hmm. that were just okay. you know, canaries, yeah. so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, good indicators of something happening. You can't put the rainbow trout with the those yeah. goldfish did not. We're not good companions with the, with the trout. <laughs> they, oh, like, they weren't. They, they, oh, no. They went no, the way no. of the dodo. I think someone called them like barn cats, which yeah. I liked it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was yeah. just the, the goldfish were kind of, you Yeah, know, they were there. They were. They they're were, like tank yeah. cats or yeah, something, yeah. but I didn't know they couldn't but, go with the trout. No, the and, trout will, when they, the trout are, well, they're all always hungry, but the trout will eat and eat and eat and eat. So and they would. they're not feeding they're you know nipping at the tails of the of the so you said your wife ashley had that question like how are they right living without eating other fish right and what alan kind of explained to me was well you know when they're just those little buggers and fry and smaller you started to feed them little pellets and this and that and so you kind of trained them oh uh, to to live off to know that they're not right right right. and you know like we're talking about self-predatory okay yeah so i mean at the earliest of ages these fish were born in this you know hatched in this scenario where it's you eat the feed or you don't eat so that's kind of how you get around that yeah one of the biggest problems that i've was told as far as farming fish and like fish like walleye right predator fish yep uh, you can't do it or it's too expensive because they rely on eating other fish. Mm-hmm. So you guys have kind of figured that out with uh, the certain type of feed that you're getting out of Omaha, which, again, who, who knew? Never that, knew, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The, the, who the, knew that one of the biggest fish food research stations or facilities is in Shenandoah, Iowa? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right down the road. Yeah. Right down yeah. the road. Yeah. Right down the road. <laughs> and, and And quite frankly, this project – May have not even been feasible if it wasn't for that fact. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? You know, okay. I mean, there, I mean, I'm sure Keel would have tried anyway. He would, yeah, <laughs> found but a different makes, way, but yeah. it makes it but makes it sense. makes it so much more because you have that expertise right there. Because you know they have to know a lot about fish, not only to fish nutrition, but fish culture and all those mm-hmm. things. And and you know, it's just it's just almost a perfect storm type of situation. Mm-hmm. You know that. You know, and I, I say it all the time, you know, any successful agriculture endeavor has to have on-farm research, mm-hmm. you know, and having that farm research just down the road is, is huge. Yeah. And absolutely. now where did um, you guys say that you get the eggs from? Was it Iceland? Iceland, yes. Okay. Yep. And they're basically bre- like, I don't know, it's like you're breeding – yeah, so they're the they're eggs su- and they, that's just what they do. It's superior genetics. And superior genetics. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is this is uh, basically superior genetics and, and collecting the, the 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 eggs and then shipping them here to the United States. So. Okay. So what we got to see today was these first tanks where it was it was like ten thousand eggs at a time, right? Yes, at least get put in these tanks. And then Into the incubator. The incubator, okay. Right, and the incubator circulates water through. It looks like a coffee craft in a yeah. lot of ways, you know. I mean, yeah. a long, tall cylinder with a spout. Yep. And the water circulates lightly, so the eggs are always kind of fluffy in there, mm-hmm. not matted down. And this literally looks like, you know, for the fishermen out there, uh, we fish with you know what are called salmon eggs but normally they're synthetic right uh in those little glass jars when we're fishing yeah, for yeah. trout it or we're, or like we're fishing something in the stream that's literally what they look like pink mm-hmm. pearls yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah the exact same size yeah 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 so then the, they just grow when they're so big enough they pop as, out as they hatch so we put them in there and, and the water circulates in about oh you know 10 to 14 days you start to see a little bit of you know action and then Soon after that, you start to see real activity of them hatching, and as they hatch, they start to swim, and they got a yolk sac, so they still are weighted down, but the current allows them with their own mobility to rise to the top and then overflow into the tank. Mm -hmm. And then they sit in that tank and absorb that yolk sac, and then once they absorb that yolk sac, they become much more mobile, and then we need to start feeding them at that point. And that's kind of where the stage we saw them at yeah. today. There was two mm-hmm. tanks there. I think one was a little bit more advanced than the other. Yep. 
yep. that was getting some feed, and the other one they were still kind of feeding off their yolk yolk sacks. Right, tiny three, three months difference. So okay. we get shipments every three months. Three months. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, you know the the those really small ones with yolk sacks. I mean, it looked like a bunch of Minnows. little pieces of string almost. Just I mean, there's thousands and thousands of them. You know, just kind of doing their thing, sitting there developing. Um, and then in the next tank where they were getting some feed, a little bit more active, mm-hmm. had started changing color. Right. Getting uh, darker. Getting darker. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was- The tanks under The on. ones underneath. Yeah. That's So then so those the ones nursery were- nursery tanks. That's the nursery. Okay. That's the nursery tank. So yep. then at a, at a certain stage, then those small fry will be divided into two and go into two of the nursery tanks. And then they'll grow out, and then they'll get graded, and the larger fish will be separated out, and the smaller will be separated. So they're growing at, at the same rate, mm-hmm. so to speak, mm-hmm. because the run I don't want to say runs, but the less uh, 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 progressive fish are less – Developed or less the non pick of the litters. <laughs> there you go. The runs. There you go. The non pick of the because there's there's definitely some that excel, and so we try to keep those together. And they would probably overpower some of the smaller ones. They'd and, eat more feed. Yeah, they, yeah, there wouldn't yeah. be as the, the we, we even out the competition yeah. as well. Yeah. I guess the best way to put yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so then those that happens in the nursery tanks and then once they get to a specific size then they go into the rearing tanks and one of the things that i thought was pretty neat was so these rearing tanks are silos mm-hmm. um adapted over to fish tanks right right um and you know the water that you guys are are spraying in there from the top is all getting sprayed in one direction so kind of creating like a circular flow in these tanks the and yeah the current there you go and then there's these there's thousands of fish in here and they're all swimming in a cir- in the same circle against the current against the current they're just doing their thing so just think of alaska salmon yep. river yep salmon going upstream well that's exactly yep. what this is except they're going against the current in the mm-hmm. in the tank yeah it's pretty neat um and like you said so the operation on the fish side is working towards where it's, it's only going to be salmon but currently you guys do have a fair amount of trout there that are yes. harvested. It mm-hmm. seems like weekly, maybe, or every few days. Every week. Every, every week. Every Wednesday. Okay. So there's a few that are harvested. And we got to see kind of the harvest process, which was really pretty fascinating too, and very similar to what us as fishermen are doing, you know, in the wild. Oh, that was a filet shack on steroids. Yeah, yeah. that was and a really yeah. nice shack. So yeah. not, I'm glad I know that that's there now because if I go fishing in the area, I can just take my bass Stop down there, there yeah. and... Mm-hmm. I know. Oh, come on. (laughs) So So uh, the door's not always open. I guess not. (laughs) Not for that. So some of the- It's called food security. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. Those techniques were familiar. And then um, what also was fascinating was you guys talked about this process of once the meat is harvested, what's done with the leftovers. Right. So- uh, Anybody that grows house plants, you know, has maybe had some exposure to fish emulsion. So we actually have recently secured a grant that allows us to, um, and we've been doing it already with the the, the waste. Okay, mm-hmm. we've been draining the waste off and making fertilizer, using that as a fertilizer. But this is again uh, a much better quality. So we take all the the carcasses and we puree them basically. And put them into a digester, add some some uh, bacteria, and it basically melds for a few days at the correct temperatures. It happens quicker when it's warm, less when it's cool. And it actually enhances and changes the, the dynamics of the, the fish slurry and makes it an unbelievably good fertilizer. It's not like, you know urea or ammonia or mm-hmm. anything like that it's more of a low grade like you know if, if it was a breakdown of mpk 900 or uh-huh. something like that but it's readily available you can't over fertilize with it you can't burn your plants with it so and it's a great organic um uh 
fertilizer. Sure. So, and that's the other thing. Everything that we do is we do as organic as we possibly can. Now, we can't be organic. We can't be certified as organic because we grow in water. Oh. So that's. I didn't know that the, was a. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a big deal. That's really? a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So I even, thought water even, was clean. Wink, but it's wink. not considered, it's not considered organic, organic yeah, right? Organic's all about soil. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, even though all of our practices for the most part, I mean, there's some, there's some parts in there that, that would not fit the organic bill, but for the most part, it's an organic operation. Yeah. 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 So that, um. Very sustainable. Or, you know, right. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. So that fertilizer that's mm-hmm. created from the, the fish slurry, mm-hmm. um, eventually, what's the, the plan is to make that available for sale to? Organic farmers, okay. yep. conventional farmers, yep. uh, greenhouses, anybody that wants to buy fish stuff in 55-gallon drums. I mean, it's fish guts. It's Essentially, fish guts. yeah. Does it smell? And I mean, that was like a um, Does it smell fishy. Uh, well, it doesn't smell fishy, but it 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 has it's slightly odoriferous. Okay. I mean, it's not. Or, I mean, I would yeah. think you couldn't lose mm. the fish odor, but I didn't know. You'd, you'd be you you. It, it's not disgusting by any stretch okay. of the imagination. I guess we yeah. should have went over there and smelled Compared it. Compared to the other, <laughs> you know, fertilizers. Well, if yeah, you, true. If, if you were to open the lid and stick your head in there, yeah, you might have a different opinion of it. But as a finished product, because it gets it gets watered right. down, it's, it's yes. very very as a constant. finished product. That's what yeah. I was thinking. How, as how a finished does, product. Very little how does that kind of thing get applied uh well like to, actually to the, you can actually it's it's low enough that you can actually foliar apply it okay. or uh-huh. or water it in you just or go and spray it mm. yeah wow. or water it in you know use it in your, in your pivot water yeah absolutely could wow. uh, but you need mean, a lot of it probably uh you'd you'd be surprised if you're gonna if pivot, you're, if you're gonna pivot it yeah. would be it would be a lot but if you were a a producer of 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 vegetable crops and you had drip irrigation sure. and you had yeah. mm. you had it injected into your drip irrigation system where it was applied yep. directly to the roots it'd be a phenomenal but Absolutely. see so this is another thing that just makes so much sense to me and right. this, you know everything that happened once happens again uh and and right. I, I forget if it was the the ponca tribe or one of these Tribes of Native Americans like, well, why do these guys always grow their best crops? Well, it's because they would catch their fish and they threw the fish guts on top of what they were growing. Yeah. And like that, I mean. Boom. So well, that, when I was a kid growing up, the Thanksgiving story was them planting a, f- putting a fish by each corn. There you go. Oh, you know? see. So yeah. they'd grow, they'd, they'd plant the seed, the corn would grow, they'd put a fish next to it. Hmm. Huh. You know, so. To feed it. Wasn't there, but I'll believe it. You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds legit. The uh, from like a plant science standpoint, mm-hmm. you mentioned um, the 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 N is readily available in this in this particular concoction. Right, right. Is that to say that a lot of the fertilizers that guys use, the N is not readily available. It needs to be put down, and then it needs to cycle in. So it takes time for the plant to – for it to be available for the plant. Correct. That's what Correct. we're saying, right? Yeah, right, essentially, yeah. So what that means is that although it might be a lower concentration of N, it's ready for the plant to take up right now. Correct. Like you could take that and spray it on the plant and the plant the plant leaf tissue would absorb it instantly. Yeah. And you could have a plant that was maybe a little bit yellow today, spray mm-hmm. it on. Tomorrow it will be – green i mean it'd be like an athlete that's thirsty drinking a gatorade and feeling the effects right away no right. not thirsty right 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 huh right yeah it's uh it's, it's neat so that's being put to use um and then obviously the uh the the harvest from the fish the fillets uh, you guys are, are processing those you're vacuum sealing them labeling them that's all getting put together stored mm-hmm. in your freezers uh, and then that stuff is going where today uh, local restaurants. Okay. Um, it's going to uh, places like uh, Lone Tree in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lone Tree Food Distribution, which is a local foods food distribution organization based in Lincoln. Um, it's going up to Omaha to some restaurants up there. It's going to um, some food banks, actually. 
And then farmers so, market, like you guys farmers went at market, the yeah, brewery? yeah, yeah, direct okay. sales, yeah, yeah. That's that's one of our primary um, primary outlets is the farmers market. Is markets, it always yeah. frozen? You guys don't ever just put it in the fridge. Yes, no, and kind of so. Okay. So that all depends on on harvest. So we really like to. So once you get into a production method, it's hard to harvest every day. Yeah. Well, sometimes you're forced to, but it's hard to harvest every day. So if we're selling it fresh, we like to harvest it one day. And actually, when we're selling it fresh, like uh, to Metro Tech Community College's Culinary Institute, okay, we'll take a fair amount up there. We harvest it that day, deliver it the same. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. okay. So, so it's not obviously it's, frozen then at that point. Right, right, right. So if we are selling a fresh product, it's with the understanding that, you know, it's been harvested mm-hmm. that day at the very least the day before uh-huh. or very most and then directly sold for, for consumption. For the most part, though, you know, in order to stay on a, on a harvest schedule, um, part of it's harvested fresh and then part of it's frozen. Okay. That, I feel like that, and I don't know if this is the right term, uh, but I'm going to say false narrative for lack of a better term. Uh, the most fresh you can get is frozen right away. You know, we have this idea as if we don't freeze it and take it somewhere, uh, you know, never frozen, always fresh. Well, no, it, it starts to decay right away. Like, I want whatever I'm having. If I don't get it that day or right off the boat or whatever, I want it frozen as soon right. as possible. Right. And there's been studies done and all these things done that prove that frozen is better. And yet it's like a thing like, ooh, no, yeah, it's not better. fresh. Yeah. Nope, that was frozen. I'm like, yeah. shut up. This is such it's a stupid yeah. argument. Like. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I was glad to take those flays that were frozen <laughs> today. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, <know>. because <laughs> because I'll guarantee you that fish had not been in the state of not breathing oxygen for any more than one hour before it was thrown into that freezer. Love yeah. it. That's yeah. that. There it is. That's, That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. 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 Wow. The, the uh, can, w- can I ask yeah, one more ahead. thing yep. real quick? Because mm-hmm. um, um, I was running around getting uh, footage and film, and, and we'll put this out on the YouTube channel yeah, uh, to give everyone a real good visual of what we're talking about here today. Yeah. And maybe I'll even throw in some of this audio with it. We'll cut it up and uh, kind of piece it together so people can go to the YouTube channel and see what we're talking about and see what we saw. Um, but you guys are having a conversation, and it's one of the things that really stifled uh, fish farms early on with salmon is that – it came out this like grayish, whitish color. It wasn't vibrant and orange. They couldn't sell it because that's not what people wanted, especially when they're eating like sushi or something like that. Right. Presentation trumped uh, functionality, we'll call it. How did you guys get around that? Why is it such a beautiful orange fillet? It's a beautiful orange f- of pink fillet because of the finishing feed that, that we've instituted into the program. So... It's almost proprietary in, in a lot of ways. Um, so as as uh, um, Al was explaining, you know, the early on fish food in the whole process is, I don't want to say just run of the mill because it's all very, very specialized. It's, it's mm-hmm. Again, it's all science. But it's not towards the finished product. And what was the term that he used? It was um, – about the food itself, the yeah, but what 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 it stripped out? Um, oh, yeah, he did. He say had it. a specific yeah. term, and 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 but anyway. Oh yeah, I do remember him saying that. I'll I'll think of it. Yeah, but so what the finish? So they get their regular feed, which is their growth feed, mm-hmm. okay, which mm-hmm. is very very important. But then the finishing feed is more of a cleansing food, mm-hmm. okay. So when you think of 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 wild caught fish mm-hmm. okay they're mm-hmm. eating a lot of creel and crustaceans yes, yes. right they have, okay. they have a color right so this finishing feed duplicates that mm. in a lot in, in a lot of ways and so it's adding those like pink flamingos are pink because they eat shrimp right 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 pink so, shrimp yeah. right right so it's the same deal so it's yeah. what the, the component of the food that's actually adding that color or making that color and then at the same time, it's stripping away some of, I don't want to say the nastiness, like, but the off flavors. Yeah, toxins or something. Yeah. There's something it, in, the, yeah, and, and, in, and, the, in the animal itself yeah. that isn't, that, that's naturally there, but 
it helps. Just just think of a catfish coming from the Missouri River. None of us want to eat a catfish yeah. that's directly from the Missouri. But if you throw them in a freshwater tank and let them be in, it cleanses them. Yeah. So this is actually a cleansing food yeah. well, that it's, helps it's, strip out. Once again, it's a finishing feed. I mean, we do the same thing for cattle, for hogs, yes. or whatever. Absolutely. You know? yeah. so like, <laughs> it's all science. Okay, I, I missed that whole conversation, yeah. but I yeah. really wanted to know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One of the things I was going to say when, when we were talking about where all this goes, I can't believe it hasn't happened yet, and I'm sure there's a reason why, and I'm sure it's going to happen, that this isn't at some very high-end restaurants as an item on the menu, Nebraska Atlantic Salmon. It will be. Yeah, I'm sure. It's it got to be. It, 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 it will be at some point here, yeah. sooner than later, would be my... We do you Are you familiar with the... Uh, Piedmontese group in Lincoln. Yes, the Pied family. Absolutely, yeah. that, absolutely. They're like they're French cattle. Yeah, yep. Their uh, restaurant. What's that in restaurant Lincoln. in Lincoln called? Mercado. The Mercado. Well, our, the Mercado is the oh, that's the, the meat, meat market. market. That's the meat oh, market. That, that restaurant is pretty. Swanky. It's an Italian restaurant. Yeah, it's very swanky. Like something like that. All day, yeah, this oh, fish yeah. would be at, oh, at a yeah. place like right. that all day. Yeah. Which they that group also owns. A series of golf courses, which includes Arbor Links Golf Course in, Le- in Nebraska oh, City. Okay, here we go. It's all coming together. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the- yeah, but Vaughn, you were talking to me about some other things that you're involved in that you have been in for years, too. Which one? <laughs> you're like, which one? <laughs> but you're talking about the one where you're going to put a restaurant. Not me, but... Or they are. You're helping with this development. Uh, Oh, 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 well, that that was part of the conversation with the Farm to Fork dinner yeah. and then the Memorial Building, which is a project that I'm involved in that we're putting in a kitchen that it's – so Nebraska City has developed a um, – let's see, what is a creative district, okay, which is big. There's several creative districts in the state of Nebraska, mm-hmm. which is about the arts, okay, yeah. and culinary is – an art it is and so one of my visions and i've been involved in this project for about 15 years and now we're finally to the point where the last two pieces of the puzzle in this beautiful beautiful building that was built in 1924 is the kitchen and the stage so kitchen work starts it was supposed to start today um (laughs) so that's what you said you're like it's today (laughs) yeah i believe it's today this week definitely but part of the whole deal that that I'm pushing for is that it would be a um, – and what was the term I used? Uh, uh, like uh, a uh, pop-up? Yeah, a pop-up. Pop-up high kitchen end. Mm-hmm. or something for a month or, you know, for, or, or even one meal. Or a meal, yeah. Right, and so that would be the type of deal that we would feature that. And But then the fish could go there too, right. I guess. Was, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's so many opportunities. The farm-to-fork dinner – you weren't in on this. But, no, but yeah. I was like, oh, we got to go to this. This is – you've yeah. shown me pictures. Eight years yeah. ago, myself and another lady, Gina Stavis, is, who's also a local foods proponent, and um, we worked on we, – we'd been talking about this for years and years and years, and eight years ago we said, oh, we're going to make this happen. <laughs> so we um, basically – Go to the city council, get a block of downtown's Main Street shut off on Sunday from 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and then bring in local chefs and and restaurants to prepare courses of meals. And we sell 160-some-odd. It'll be 180-some-odd tickets that mm. we – we That's do this said, and Ben's have, a foodie, so. have local awesome. wines and cider and, you know, we had Patriot – vodka there one year for it's in it's in august it's going to be august 18th i believe this year it takes us last year we We're sold in. last year we <laughs> sold the 160 some odd tickets in three days all wow. right well Ooh. save so. two of us two i mean i'm sure you have everyone that wants to <laughs> save them for Andy you probably wants to go too yeah, yeah I'll but, go. Ashley. but we'll, I, be, I would we'll go. be doing the salmon there too we yeah. did this year actually we did a little bit of smoked salmon did you and that salmon so smoked and that trout smoked. Oh, Ben's Un- gonna have a smoker. Believable. <laughs> I got a smoker for Christmas. So did yeah. you? Oh, serve it up. There oh, we go. Man. I'm telling you, it's delicious. I bet it is. <laughs> oh, over the top. Yeah. So, to we we talked through that whole process with the salmon and and we kind of jumped off of the uh, the lettuce. So we got to see the growing operation of the lettuce and all the different stages mm-hmm. that you guys have that in from mm-hmm. seed all the way to harvest today. Right. Um, 
once so it, you how many different varieties of lettuce do you guys have down there Right now, there's seven troughs, and we try to have seven different varieties that we have available, okay. but we always have one or two varieties that we're testing. Like, like how many varieties technically are there of lettuce, oh, can I ask? Hundreds? Hundreds, if not There thousands. is hundreds? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, seven yeah. is, I guess I was thinking <laughs> like 20. I don't, I don't know. know. No, no, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. Hundreds, okay. 20 that are 150 years old. Oh, God. See, I'm <laughs> so out of it. Yeah, okay. yeah, well. yeah. And, 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 you know, each variety of lettuce is is different. I mean, I've got lettuce out there that I absolutely think is the most beautiful lettuce, and I'm trying it a second time because I think it's so beautiful and such an awesome red leaf lettuce. But aphids love it, you know. So yeah, why am I growing this beautiful lettuce when you know? If there's mm-hmm. one lettuce plant in the whole place, an aphid's going to find it. So that's some of the on-farm, in-greenhouse research that I've come across. Okay. That, you know, yeah, I'm probably not going to grow too much of that. Gotcha. You know, because it's… The romaine lettuce looks beautiful. I mean, oh, it that's great. I mean to tell you, the romaine that we can grow there yeah. during the height of the season, unbelievable. Hey. Unbelievable. What, from, <laughs> you from guys a, sound like you're talking about <laughs> women or something. <laughs> We're talking about salmon and lettuce, okay? Come on. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> yeah. My favorite lettuce to grow out there is a zirka, which is a green, uh, which is a oh, red. Oh, she's a beauty. Summer, yeah. she's so, she is a beauty. <laughs> yeah. From a standpoint she's a of redhead. what makes it so good, what's the, like, what are those cues that you get out of it that you love so much? Me? Yeah. It's from a producer standpoint. It grows fast. It's beautiful. It's not real susceptible to a lot of things. Oh, okay. You, yep. you, you, it's, it's a nice, bulky, pretty yep. lettuce that is a pow. Can is you it, taste the difference, though? That's what I was going to say. So, like, you, if you take so, somebody who, like, uh, is, yeah. a, I don't is know. a brewer, they're going to say, okay, this beer, you know, has these hands. Oh, you, this, always, you, know, you always have those freaks. So is, is that the deal with lettuce or no? Well, yeah, 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 I'm sure there's <laughs> weird deal. In college, I was the assistant to the state home gardener, okay? And she went to China to her husband. She went to China. So I was left in charge every morning. We had like 25 varieties of lettuce that I'd have to go out first thing in the morning and taste test. Oh, God. Lettuce for mm. bitterness. Now, there is definite differences in lettuce. Okay, so, so you can taste it. So the high-end lettuce, a high-end lettuce is like bib or butter, you know, that the, the green one yes, that I showed you. Yes, it's like you. really deep green. Deep and green. And has like the round Right, leaves. round leaves, very tender, very mm-hmm. succulent, melt-in-your-mouth type of lettuce, whereas the azurka is more of a leaf lettuce that's crunchy and, mm-hmm. you know. Wildish. Wildish in a little ways. And yeah. then you got your romaine that's totally different. And then you got your Lola Rosa that's beautiful and tender as wagyu and you huh. know all that kind of stuff okay. so. so it's the texture it's the bitterness it's texture the sweetness. sweetness we yeah. get lettuce but not enough to be like okay you know line six of them up and we right, you know right. the that's difference. okay that's I okay probably do that <laughs> we gotta get we gotta get we our can, lettuce game on we gotta that get our sounds lettuce like game a party up. to me yeah. <laughs> you don't make friends with salad you don't make <laughs> So you so once you get it to harvest time, then mm-hmm. what are you guys doing with that? We saw a pretty uh, unique contraption in the back to um, dry it. Oh, uh, the washing machine, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we harvest it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we do sell it as heads, especially the bib, the butter lettuces that makes a really nice. You yeah, know, it looks in, so in a cool. clamshell. Yeah. Um, and then what we sell the most of, though, is blend. So we harvest all the different varieties, mix it together, um, we wash it, sanitize it, and then we throw it in a washing machine that's never washed, a, never been hooked up to water, but we use that as our spinner. And it spins the lettuce dry, and then we package it. Package it. So. Okay. so um you guys are like individually packaging these like like if we go to the grocery store we buy a package of mixed lettuce off the shelf it's yeah, similar so, to that yeah so it'd be a, a, either a half pound generally we sell pound bags of lettuce okay. um, so a pound which is a pillow about oh i don't know 12 mm-hmm. inches by 
whatever. And there's generally four or five different varieties mixed in that. And you'll more. do the same thing like you do with the salmon, go to different places or restaurants or Yeah, so we've market. got – so so um, Ellsworth Crossing over oh, yeah, by – yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we sell there. Um, they And they actually smoke a lot of, the, of salmon the and, and trout. Um, so we do Ellsworth Crossing. There's a new place that's opened up in Weeping Water that's very similar to Ellsworth. Um, no more empty pots up in Omaha. Um, some high-end restaurants in, in Omaha. Um, I don't think you're going to have trouble finding the demand. No. For no. Any, any of no. That. The, the, the problem is pricing, price point, because sure. it is a little bit uh, higher end, and it's sure. really hard to compete with 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 uh, soil-growing lettuce because it's so much less expensive. Mm-hmm. Well, not so much, but it is less expensive. So we kind of have this niche that – that it takes off after the high tunnels and everything. So, so high tunnel lettuce is probably for the most part after this event done for the season, you know, until a couple more months. So it's opened up that aspect. So that competition's disappeared for now. But the soil growing lettuce is our is is an issue because that's what most people are used to. Yeah. 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 When I've never been to a restaurant or had lettuce or even seen it on the shelf anywhere that they've tried to market, you know, the the local thing, the specialty, any of that kind of stuff like you see on meats or you see right. on certain kinds of dishes yeah, or yeah, on yeah. certain menus. Yep. It's attractive uh, if So you that did seems that. to me like that would be a very good idea. Like if I went to a restaurant again, like Piedmontese restaurant yep. and their salad, you know, if I had a couple to pick from and one of them said, this is literally Nebraska grown sustainable lettuce. I'd be like, let me try that one. Or if it had like sure. a little story behind it or a couple of the flavor cues or something, I'd be like, cool, let's try it. Shouldn't you're at a restaurant. You're there to buy. You, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, of course, you'd spring for it. I think yeah. you would. Distribution's an issue also. I'm sure. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of restaurants or smaller restaurants don't buy more than 10 pounds at a time. So, you know, not. I'm thrilled to sell 10 pounds of lettuce. Don't get me wrong. But when you start making a whole bunch of stops, yep, yep. you know, it, it really eats into the bottom line. But there's some restaurants up in Omaha right now that are starting to take on our product that I am just thrilled to death. I'd be thrilled to death to take them two pounds, yep. you know, because the, of the quality of restaurant. And they will promote it as, you know, right. locally yeah. grown. Uh-huh. And that will, will be one of their selling points. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. It so really how, is. Like, how long do you see yourself doing this, or what do you, or what do you think? Shame on you. Is in, <laughs> I, I, you to, know, what does tomorrow bring? Tomorrow, tomorrow brings some. What is today? Wednesday. <laughs> I think it's Thursday. Oh, tomorrow <laughs> brings cold weather. Wednesday. Tomorrow, I yeah, heard you say yeah, that you're going to have to yeah, cover. So, yeah, today's yeah. Wednesday. You're going to have to yeah. cover tomorrow, the lettuce again. Tomorrow brings me trying to keep the lettuce alive for one more minus 18 event that I hope is the last minus 18 event right. for the season. Yeah, so, you said you're going to let it breathe. <clears throat> yeah, take the let canopies it off yeah. and then close Re- them up recover again. Recover it. Yeah. So then next week is the Nebraska Sustainable Agriculture Society. Um, meeting in Columbus, um, and so we have 50 pounds going to that. So next okay. Wednesday we'll be harvesting as so long as we busy. haven't froze. Yeah, yeah, we'll be a little bit busy. Um, 50 pounds sounds like a lot, but it's it's not. It's you know, it's like 50 50 of those. No, things. no, it's 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 more than that. Yeah, more than that. But okay. yeah, when when we start talking 275 pounds of lettuce a day, that's a little bit different. But um, so we're getting ready for that. And uh, again, you know, but production right now with the cold temperatures and and the reduced light. You know, we just got done having our December 21st, the shortest day of the year. So the sunlight is 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 a one of the main driving factors for for production. So now we're seeing that ramp up. So we're going from our lowest point of production in the year up into one of our higher points coming up here in May. So, May is a mm-hmm, okay. Yep, yep. February yeah. it's pretty good. March is getting better. April's getting pretty good. May's getting yahoo june yahoo july it starts to get hot so it kind of levels off july august september and then it starts going up again and then right 
down for the cold temperatures and reduce sun. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Very cool. God. Yeah. Amazing. It was a, it was a cool day seeing all that. Um, so it, what happens tomorrow? Unknown. But I'll be growing lettuce. Yeah. We know tomorrow. Yeah. You're, you're never going to stop working. Don't tell everybody that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. We better stop I this recording. <laughs> I can edit that out. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, but I do think it would be cool since you did take some film mm -hmm. if, as he was talking about that, to interject some cool videos. Yeah. Just, I mean, the oh, visual sure. there was awesome. I yeah. loved seeing that. And I could see why you don't want to go see the fish. Yeah. Because I really do like looking at the fish. It was They're just like swimming Oh and yeah. swimming. <laughs> but, you know, looking at the greenhouse and seeing a bunch of white blankets is not impressive but the green but when you take them off i'm it, sure it's, it's beautiful. beautiful yeah but when you walk from that fish portion across that walkway and into the greenhouse when it's totally uncovered and you see the, the reds and the greens of the lettuce mm -hmm. it's pretty it's unbelievable we'll beautiful. have to come back when when the yeah. sheets are yeah. off yeah for yeah. sure yeah yeah well, well we, we definitely appreciate you guys having us it was it lived up to Everything that I hoped it would be and more. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. It is a pretty unique bird out there, it, I'll it tell really you. Is. Yeah. 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 It really is. Yeah. Um, it's cool to to bring this to folks, you know, of, of oh, what's yeah. going on in Nebraska. I yeah. mean, this is, again, this is common folk. This is why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. This is just some common people down in Nebraska City doing some uncommon stuff some, some crazy shit. That's, that mean, has some great ideas yeah. that, have, that are willing to move forward and and try it yeah yes. and it it impacts so many big things that we talk about overfishing right. the ocean overfishing river systems yeah. you know it, it addresses that uh, sustainability oh water water yeah. usage water conservation yeah. like uh, there's so many things that come out of this yeah. I, I and i no matter what you talked about you made some mistakes Make a hundred more mistakes. It doesn't matter. This this train is moving forward. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It it it's moving forward in a big, big sort of way. And I really look forward to the next twelve to eighteen months to see what happens because we'll be telling a different story oh. in eighteen. Oh, months. I yes. bet. Fantastic. I bet. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. Kelly had said to me on the side <laughs> that she's like, oh, you know, you see all these PVC pipes or whatever. She's like. It may not look that pretty, but really it's it's so smart because if we don't want this, we can cut it, we can close it, we can, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. you can just adjust and move tanks around and do all, all the things. And it's totally, I mean, if you want it where, you know, in the next place or whatever to be exactly and not movable, you right. could do permanent things. But right now you guys are learning and adjusting and moving and growing. And It's a big boy and big girl tinker toy. Yes. Yeah. I just thought that was yeah, because you're like, oh, there's a zip tie. And like to me, that didn't seem hodgepodgey, but it seemed brilliant because what if you wanted to move something? Then you're not putting something there permanently. It was just right, right. Very, yeah, most everything very smart. in there is done for a reason. Yes, it's absolutely. All, it's all set up for a reason. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. the thing about it is, Keel has surrounded himself with some expertise that mm -hmm. really he's lucky that he's been able to pull together in Nebraska. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Well, folks, pay attention to it. Look for Nebraska Vegetable and Protein. I know I've found it on social media. Is there, is there a website or is there? Yeah, a, it's Nebraska Vegetable and Protein, okay. yep. But Mimi has a very vibrant Facebook page oh, that she okay. does a lot of. Mimi is wonderful on Facebook and puts a lot of pertinent information and a lot of fun stuff sometimes. And that's where and, you saw some things. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, and they'll they'll post on there when they're doing things like these uh, farmer's markets and stuff yeah. like that. Correct. So folks can go seek them out if they want to yep. try the, the produce and the fish. Um, we'll and report I, back, too, when oh, we, we eat ours. We will be soon because we're going to be cooking some. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Yep. The 18th. Looking forward to the it. The 18th. I, I, I got it. Wait, what's the 18th? It's a thing in Nebraska City. On August 18th. Oh, I thought that's when you we were just talking about cooking. I thought you were like going to cook oh, something on the 18th. Oh, he's talking the farm to fork. Yeah. That's a whole different We'll okay. probably talk podcast. about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we totally up. have to amp that one up. But you probably already have all the tickets sold anyway. <laughs> I'll let you know. You have an in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, Vaughn. Well, it's been Vaughn. fun, man. We Absolutely. appreciate having you. My pleasure. Hopefully you had a good time. Absolutely. It's good to catch up with you and see everything you got going on. Yeah. and. Appreciate it. Get to know everything a little bit better. So, yeah. folks, hope you enjoyed it. Anything else? That's it. Next time Got we'll it. have margaritas. 
There you go. <laughs> <Margaritas>. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to close it Peace. out. See you, folks. See you.